Hi, this is Father Tom Page, pastor of St. Jude Parish in Grand Rapids and uh, Saints Anne and Ignatius in Baldwin and Luther. Uh, today is the second Sunday of Easter season, and I'd like to share some thoughts about the very first reading that um, is read in churches throughout the world today. Whether or not people can gather, which would be pretty rare these days that anybody in the world would be gathering to pray together, but uh, the church still prays these same uh, prayers and reads these same readings. So this is the, the first reading uh, from the, the Mass today, and it's from the Acts of the Apostles. Right at the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles, so the disciples are just starting to, to uh, get together and, and kind of form communities that would become the church. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions, and then divide them among all, according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to the breaking of the bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. The Word of the Lord. They, this new group of Christians, followers of Christ, they found a strength in realizing that God was with them as they gathered together. They even sold what they had, those who had some possessions, so that the uh, less fortunate among could still be part of their community. They did that um, confident that their God was in their midst, that Jesus truly had risen. And uh, this, the, the Acts of the Apostles is a, is a wonderful story of how the church grew uh, in, in the early days of the church. And I would say that if uh, after you've read all the gospel, um, uh, uh, all the gospel accounts of Jesus's resurrection in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John during this Easter season, good to, they're easy to find. They're at the end of each gospel. Um, after that, if you've still got some time during the Easter season, start reading some of some of the Acts of the Apostles to see how we kind of got going. We started as a community of faith. And they were spread and sometimes they couldn't get together. Uh, the, the letters of Paul point out how, how they did that imperfectly and sometimes it didn't go the way that Paul and others knew that it should and yet they continued on with the ideal that God was with them, and they were going to help each other. They were going to help each other know the risen Lord, and they would help the needs of those who were less fortunate than them. Not only within their own community, but they became known as the folks who were ready to help whoever needed help. And as true as it was then, uh, hopefully, it's true for us. If there's any group of people right now, at this point in time in history, in the world, in our communities, on the north end of Grand Rapids or the north end of the Diocese of Grand Rapids, if there's any group of people that ought to be an example 
to others of God's love active and present shouldn't it be the followers of Christ and so we we, we hear the beginning of our story and it gives us a chance to stop and ask ourselves are, are we living up to that that call from the very beginning even when we can't physically be in communion, can we find those ways to be in communion in the service of those who need it? This time of, of um, virus, this time of separation, uh, is a passing time. The time of God with us and the presence of Jesus within us is an eternal time, beginning with, with Jesus' resurrection and will continue forever. I'd like to uh, make a mention especially to the uh, church in uh, Baldwin and the church in Luther. Uh, I'll be up uh, uh, meeting with pastoral council folks with the uh, finance council folks and I think maybe some other a couple of our employees uh, Diane and our, our newest um, employee Nancy who's doing the, um, the uh, bookkeeping um, we'll be getting together at 3 o'clock on Tuesday. Now we're going to get together in the church and hopefully it's not a real big group because we're really not supposed to be gathering in big groups. So we'll make sure that we do that um, in, a, in a safe way. And I'd ask anybody who's planning to come, if you're on the Finance Council and you're planning to come in, Pastoral Council, um, uh, please w bring and, and wear a face mask for that. Uh, we'll uh, kind of take a look at where we are as a faith community, uh, what the challenges are, what our situation is now, and uh, hopefully kind of look a little bit to the future. I, uh, I will be seeing you soon, hopefully not too many weeks uh, away, uh, to in, in a small way probably at, at first, but get to see you personally uh, uh, a little bit more. So until then, we keep the prayers going. I've got two, two candles in our, our shrine of St. Jude. St. Jude, the, the, the patron saint of impossible cases. And when things seem impossible, people love to have St. Jude pray with them. So we have a, a, a candle for the people of St. Jude Parish and a candle for the people of St. Anne and St. Ignatius Parish uh, in these times that, at times, it might seem impossible. But... We know in faith since the time of the, the earliest disciples that God is with us and will continue to be with us always.